Okay, we're back in our session. Um, I had to take a break there and fix some of the technical issues. What I really should have done was trust my original script that I had worked through uh, prior to creating the video because what I needed to do was actually not only install these supplemental packages, Atlas, Atlas Devel, etc. Uh, once I did that, I had to uninstall R and reinstall it so that when it was installed it properly recognized where all these other uh, related programs were. Once I did that it allowed me to install Fast ICA and then I was able to install the tre Trelloscope using this command. So uh, one byproduct of that, I'll just show you my uh, messages here. Um, so my configuration messages in the uh, Hadoop cluster are, you know, me just executing these commands to remove R, and it removes R and related packages, and then reinstalling them, uh, which happens re relatively smoothly. Um, then once I restart the R session, um, it no longer recognizes my R directory as writable by this R Studio application. Now that's something I could again dig into the uh, file permissions and fix, but I'm not going to do that for this demo. I was, I'm just going to install it into a personal library putting the R program in the local directory. Um, installed fast ICA, installed Trelloscope via GitHub, and I'm also going to install the related data package, which is Hafen Housing Data. Put that in here as well. Um, this is going to give our quick start example some data to work with. Uh, and we also are going to need uh, later on the R, R JSON interface, R JSON IO, uh, to be available. So let me go ahead and complete all those installations. So if you're doing this, um, try executing the full sequence of commands in the script here including the the yum installations of packages and you should be able to get everything running again if you do this on your local machine you're not going to have these hassles you'll be be able to um, modify your setup much more easily but I again I just want to prove to you that it does work in the cloud environment. Okay, so now we are going to load our materials uh, as libraries in the R environment. And it loads those up. And so now uh, we start to work through this. Uh, on the Tessera website, there's a, a a more detailed guide to this code. I'm really just kind of displaying it again as an example. Um, if we we can use typical R commands to look at the data, the head. Uh, let me at this point um, take the code from over here and put it in the R Studio environment so we don't have to switch back and forth. So I go to File, New File, R Script, and now I can paste in my R code here. And we can actually start running it uh, from this screen. So I have my divide and recombine functions. So this data is a large uh, data set, not really big data, but a reasonably large data set for all counties in the US. Um, the median selling price of houses um, 
over a, a relatively short span of time, but at some span of a few years. So we're going to create an object that div by dividing, sorry, I should just use my RStudio shortcut, which is Control Enter to execute any command. And so you can see we're operating uh, across the entire database, um, the entire data set, excuse me, running a divide command. And you can see it's running MapReduce. Uh, takes a little bit of time for this to run. It's not a huge data set, but it, it'll return a result. And now it's done. And we can summarize that data. We can break the data into quantiles. Again, by a divide and recombine function that ran reasonably quickly because we've already that this is only by county. Um, across the entire database, we're working with 17 megabytes of data. So again, not small, not big, big data, but not small. And now we're going to plot that data. So um, these are the median list prices per square foot. We can see that most of them are in a central range, but there's some outliers, um, very low and very high in this distribution. Then we're going to run a regression for every item in the database. We want to see the trend in price over time. Is it going up? Is it going down? The easiest way to do that is to draw a line through the data via a regression process. So we can see if the line is going up, the line is going down. So then we, I, I won't step through, I won't explain all of the operations here, uh, but we're generating the data that we're going to need to plot it in just a minute via Trelliscope. And every time we get to a divide and recombine step, here we have a recombine. Um, notice that it, you know, it takes uh, 20 to 30 seconds to spin through all the data and generate a result. Okay, so now we are going to make our Trelliscope display. So we've what we've seen so far is that the operations on the data are relatively simple. They do pass things out to the MapReduce algorithm and uh, take a little bit of time to come back. Now we're going to get into the data visualization. So a sketch of how Trelliscope works is we're creating a connection. Uh, we're going to create a little mini database of our images and relationships and we, we store that via a connection that we can then access from the display. Uh, that's what's going on with this VDB con. And then we need to actually create some graphs to fill it in. So the time panel is a function that's going to relate the median price sold over, over time. We, we create that as a function and then we can we're testing it out for some limited um, slices of the data set. And then we're going to create a function that lets us um, evaluate the slope of the line. Uh, it's Here it's called a cognostics function. Um, and we're taking the results of our regression coefficients and pulling them into this into this function. So we can access for each county in the data set we can get a slope and this is going to enable us to create an interactive display. So the function for that is make display and instead of discrete data sets uh, the the display is built by using these functions that we've just created. The key is because they're functions, um, they can be evaluated differently for each each county. 
Uh, once we've done all that, uh, actually notice it's still uh, taking some time to process because this is, um, a, if you will, a big data step. By making the display, we're asking it to evaluate for every every county um, the the images it's going to be using. And so then we 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 can just type view, and we've launched the Trelloscope environment. So thank you for your patience of getting to this point. Uh, this is what we were trying to do all along: is get to Trelloscope so we could show you some results. So we've just got one group of data. This can actually handle, you know, multiple data sources, and you can switch back and forth between them. Click here, and we've got our price per square foot over time. Now the first display is the first county, Abbeville County in South Carolina in the data set. And then we can page through all 2800 or more prices. And we can see, you know, here are some counties that have a very strong um, cyclical pattern, others uh, more scattered uh, exhibiting more random fluctuation and some have significant gaps between the list price and the sold price um, indicating here the, the sold price is far above the list price indicating th that buyers are rushing into the market um, and you can very quickly uh, view a reasonably large am amount of images this way. So the the default viewer behavior is quite nice. Uh, we can also do things like filter the table. Um, so we might want to only look at the items that have a positive slope. I'll say from 0 to 1. So these are uh, counties where the price is rising and once we apply the filter, notice our total drop down. Only about half of the uh, counties have a consistent rising trend over this time period that we're looking at. So that was the sort and filter. Uh, we can also, you know, simply use it to sort. We can say, what are the the ones with really high uh, increases, the high slopes? Well, there's uh, New York County. Uh, Harney County, Oregon, apply those and now our images are sorted as well so we can page through. Uh, there's a bivariate filter. Um, we can throw in a couple of things. Mean list, let's try mean list versus slope and see if there's a relationship we can detect. Um, I'm sure that over time the options that are available via the Trelloscope are going to are going to expand as well. But even right now, um, I think this is a a, a useful viewer for. Um, it certainly beats configuring uh, 2,800 graphs by hand or even via a for loop, um, and lets you. Um, not just generate a bunch of graphs and stick them in a directory, but gives you a way to browse through them as in a human understandable way. So this is Trelloscope. Uh, again, we this is running on an RStudio server. We could create an instance of Trelloscope that ran on a server and give, you know, give people access. Say, hey, you want to understand my big data? go browse it on um, the Trelloscope interface that I've created and use standard R type graphing functions uh, but fit into this framework that will handle both a large data source and the display of many many uh, graphs. So I'm not going to really go in, into this any further um, but you know you can see from this that there are a lot of options. Um, the displays are very clear, easy to navigate through. The ability to filter, um, if we just say wanted to use one state, 
uh, let's let's look at say Connecticut. Connecticut shouldn't have too many counties. Um, and actually, there were no counties in Connecticut where the filter we were applying that it had a positive slope um, was true. So let's say negative one to one. Now we've got some of those uh, eight counties um, in in Connecticut now. The observant ones of you will notice the quirk of my browser that. Um, because I'm so insistent on overriding default settings, I've got these odd characters that just tend to display instead of, um, you know, a forward and back arrow. That's mostly what I'm missing here. I've gotten used to that. I hope that doesn't bother you too much. Um, also, uh, notice we can magnify those graphs uh, if we like. So we can, 25x might be a little too big. Uh, it's going to maybe have some problems with the size of my screen here if I do that. Uh, so let me not mess around with the magnification. And notice along the bottom we've summarized the things, the filters that are active. So we can keep track of, well, what have I done to restrict this view? I can, And I could quickly remove some of these. I can remove the slope restriction um, and, you know, that'll immediately and dynamically change the way the graph is displaying. So there you go. Trelloscope, the website that has the full description is tessera.io and um, I certainly hope this project continues to develop it um, because I, as an R user, primarily an R user, um, I I like to see things like this where big data is coming to R rather than me having to get out of R and go to big data. So let's stop there for convenience of the viewers and we'll come back with our concluding uh, pieces of code.